Hi everyone, today we are going to be inside of GIMP and we are going to be working on the Colorize Interactive um, filter inside of GMIC. Um, I was asked to do this quite a while ago and I do apologize, I did forget about it and um, uh, I went through some of my old mail and stuff and I seen that and I, for the person that asked, I I'm incredibly sorry that it's taken so long, but we're going to go ahead and get started today. The uh, picture that we're going to be using is this picture right here. And I'm not sure if this image right here was originally black and white or not. I'm kind of thinking it was, but um, that's okay because we are going to go ahead and turn it black and white anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and open up. This okay, maybe not. Well, I just go and open it up over here then. And so we are going to go ahead and turn this image black and white. So we're going to go to colors and then go down to desaturation. And I'm going to desaturate it by luminosity and press OK. And then we are going to go ahead and go into filters, GMIC, and we're going to go down to black and white. And we are going to click on Colorize Interactive. And I will go through these other Colorize um, filters in a later tutorial. Um, but this is the one that to me is the most useful. So we got the input type, the output type, view resolution, first additional palette, and second additional palette, and then we got clear control points and some instructions going on right here. So the input type, we want to be a black and white photograph because that's what this is. Um, they also got line art, so you could uh, colorize your line art in here too if you'd like. So that's pretty useful. The output, output type, we got colorize uh, image with just one layer. And then you got colors only one layer, which means it puts the colors. And then you got image plus color, colors two layers. And that is the one that we're going to use because it's going to leave the image and then it's going to add the color layer also. I don't, I don't want it to add the color on top of the image. So we're going to go ahead and click there. And then on the view resolution, if you have a um, slower computer, you could try this. But I'm going to forewarn you now that if you go to small or medium or even high, you're going to get a lot of color bleeding. And when you, you'll see, uh, once you, finalize it that you'll see a lot of color bleeding and it's not what it looks like in the preview. So I keep mine on very high, um, even slower. And then the palettes, which is palettes, if you guys don't know, it's just a set of uh, colors all grouped together. Um, and we are going to use a couple of those. So to just click on it and then you want to go, I'm on Windows 8.1, 64 bits. So I'm going to go into my program files. Then go down to GIMP 2 and then go into Share GIMP 2.0 and then go down to Palettes. And the first palette I'm going to add is the GPS-PAL. If we click in that folder, it's going to be the Human Skin and press Open. Then we are going to click on the second one and, oops, and we're going to go back in there and GIMP 2. Share GIMP 2.0 palettes, and we're going to go back into the GPS PAL, and I'm going to use Color Wheel 3 and press open. And you could go ahead and Google um, color palettes, and you'll find a bunch of free ones that you could use out there. Um, and you could just Google uh, color palettes for GIMP, uh, color palettes.gpl, and you will find a bunch of them out there. And that's all we need to do. Next, I'm going to go ahead and actually, no, I'm going to go ahead and go through this stuff real quick. Um, this is just the description of the filter. And you'll see this button right here. I'm sorry if you can't see this and it's kind of small for you. It's a little bit hard for me to read also, but it says clear control points. And what that means is if you're working on this image and you have something that you like and you uh, go ahead and, and apply it and you want to go through and make another one when you reapply this the control points will still be there and so you just hit here and it'll clear all your control points 
um, down here. This is just going through all the uh, controls and stuff. So left mouse, mouse button creates a new color control point or move an existing one. The right mouse button over a control point deletes it. Uh, right mouse button anywhere else picks a color from the image. The mouse wheel or keys, control plus arrows up or down, view in and out. So that's how you zoom in and out. Control plus mouse wheel uh, or shift plus mouse wheel or arrow keys, move image in zoom view. Um, you can press the space key is what you need to press to update your control points. The tab key toggles markers, view modes, backspace deletes, page up increases the contrast, page down decreases it, R enters slash exit color replace mode, D increases window size, uh, control, I'm sorry, control D, control C decreases window size, control R resets the window size, exit Q or enter, exits the interactive window. So we're going to go ahead and get started here and I'm going to hit apply. And it will pop up a separate image viewer and it will pop up your color palettes and it will pop up the regular color wheel and then it'll pop up this other color palette. These are the two, the human skin and the color wheel three is the ones that um, I specified that I wanted to, it to open and this color palette comes with it automatically. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and look at this and this woman's face is kind of yellow. So we're going to try to kind of find a darker yellow color. So I'm going to go ahead and close some of these windows. And I think this color right here will work pretty good because it's kind of yellow. And so I'm just going to go around the perimeter of her face here and put some control points. And this filter right here is just kind of play with it type of filter uh, until you get what you want. Um, because it don't really, um, I don't know. It, it just, you'll see right now when I go ahead and I'm zooming in and out with my mouse wheel, you'll see right now I'm going to press, go ahead and press space bar. And it processed the image and you'll see that it processed it all over the place. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and do the sky now. And I'm going to come down here and that sky was kind of bluish greenish. So I'm going to click on this color and I'm going to put a color point here, here, one here, and one back in this corner. And I'm going to press space bar and let's see what that looks like. And you'll see that we get a lot of color bleeding and that's fine. I'm going to come down here to this human skin color and I'm going to click this darker brown color. I'm going to go ahead and click one here, maybe one in the middle and one over here. And I'm going to press space bar. And you'll see that that colored that in pretty good. Maybe I'll move this up just a tad, move this one up just a tad and this one. I don't want an extra one, so I'm going to left click and delete that one. And then let's see what it does now. I'll move this one back down. And there we go. That's okay for now. And now we're going to do the um, poncho. Um, I'm not really sure what you call what she's wearing, but I'm going to choose this kind of grayish black color down here. And I'm just going to put a point there. A point there, one down in this corner, and one down in this corner, and maybe one up here. And let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to press space bar. And that did a fairly good job. Let's put one with this black maybe about right here, and let's try that. And there we go. So we got the colors uh, looking okay. And like I specified before, the um, the colors on this is just basically to help you save time from having to come in here and do all this and mask and brush and all that stuff. So let's go ahead and click back on this yellowish 
color for the skin down here and let's put a few more points. Process, put one there and process. Um, this is not a work all, save all type of filter. Um, you're still gonna have to do some post after doing this. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about her eyes because we'll go in there and mask them out. I'm just trying to get enough color in her face to save on some work. And so we're just gonna click control points around here. And just try to fill in her face a little bit. There's not really too much to this filter. And this image, um, this image ain't a harder image. It, it's uh, not to say that it's a super easy image to work with, but there, the color palette, there wasn't too much to the color palette. Um, and I do apologize for that. I didn't have no black and white photos to work with. So I had to go ahead and search for an image that I could use royalty free. And I think that's going to go ahead and be it. So if you press page up or page down, you'll decrease the contrast. Page up increases it again. Um, what was the other one? Back up. There was, let's see. R enters. So press R, replace by, and press R again to get out of that. I'm not too sure what that is there, um, but you could pan with your middle mouse button and zoom in with your middle mouse button also. So that's what I use for this. And I think that is all. So I'm just going to go ahead and press enter and let this image process. And we'll go ahead and get out of here out of GMIC. And as you can see, if I move this up, uh, it's just a color layer. And so after you do that, don't freak out. What you need to do is you need to come over here to either overlay or soft light or one of those modes and work on your image that way. But I'm going to keep it on normal for right now. And I'm going to go over here and we're going to do a little bit of the post work. I'm going to grab the brush and I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity on this a little bit and I'm going to zoom in and oops, control Z. I'm going to hold down alt and I'm going to pick that color. Let me make sure I go ahead and pick the right color. And then I'm just uh, lowering the opacity so I can see if you don't want to mess uh, this image up. All you need to do is just make you a new layer. You just make a new layer and then color over it that away but for now we're just going to stay right here and i'm not worried about ruining this because it's just a color layer and i'm not worried about her eyes you just want to go through here and color you'll want to use a soft brush also so you don't get harsh edges and we're just going to go in here and color in the rest of the skin And like I said, that filter is just a helper to colorize your image. In here and make sure the rest of her skin is colored in. I can get the brush the right size. Alrighty, that looks pretty good to me. Now we are going to make sure that we get it all colored in there. We can leave the opacity down if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and right click and add a layer mask. And 
grab it on my other screen and press add. And then we are going to press X to go to black. That X switches your colors. And then let's go back. So we are on black. And let's just go ahead and remove the color from these eyes here. Going to lower the opacity a little bit more so I can see what I'm doing. Just like that. And let's go ahead and turn the opacity all the way back up. And let's go ahead and apply this layer mask. And then let's go ahead and control click and grab this color back and let's press V and raise this color or this uh, brush up just a little bit. Get some of that harsh edges out of there. Alrighty, just like that. And then we're going to come over here and Actually, first we are going to go ahead and duplicate it. So let's duplicate it and let's turn this one off. And then let's go ahead and turn this one and let's put it on. Let's see. Overlay. I'm going to do soft light. And we are going to go up here to filters. And I'm going to go to blur. Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur this by, say, 20 pixels. And press OK. And there you go, the Gaussian Blur got rid of a lot of them harsh, harsh edges. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this. And I'm going to drop the opacity just a little bit. And then that is it. I'm going to bring up this picture. And you'll see that this picture is more saturated. So what we can do is you could go up to Layer, New from Visible. And go to Colors. And then go to Hue Saturation. And bring the saturation up, press OK, and then go ahead and bring the image back up. And you will see that it looks almost the same. You could go ahead and go through and play with the hue and saturation and stuff like that a little bit more. Um, turn the lightness down a tad, bring it up a tad. Play with the hue. And press OK. And that looks OK to me. And then you could always um, go ahead and make a new layer. Press OK. And let's make this kind of a darkest purple color. Grab your gradient. Drag a gradient over it, put it on, multiply, zoom out just a little bit, and that looks okay to me. So let's bring up this other image, and if you do a little bit more work to it, and, and uh, you can get it to look the same, but for that filter, it helps out a lot, and so you see... You can just go ahead and go to the before and after there. And I hope that helps you guys out. That filter is not a hard filter to understand. Um, and it helps out a lot. It's a big time saver, saver instead of having come in here and do that by hand. So please like and subscribe and have a great day. Thank you.